look forward uh, in these discussions to being very clear, very direct uh, about the areas where we have differences and where the United States stands. Uh, and I have no doubt you will do the same on behalf of China. Uh, but I underscore again, it's important that we do that. Uh, important to demonstrate that we're managing responsibly the most consequential uh, relationship, I think, for both of us uh, in the world. Uh, I hope we can make uh, some progress on the issues that our presidents agreed. Ten months ago, I traveled to the People's Republic of China at a time of profound tension between our countries uh, with the aim of stabilizing the relationship, uh, reopening and strengthening our high-level channels of communication. Over a series of candid and constructive conversations I had then with President Xi and other senior officials, I made clear our policies and intentions and identified issues of shared interest where we might work together. Those discussions, which were followed by additional senior level visits and meetings between our governments, helped lay the foundation for a productive summit between President Biden and President Xi in San Francisco at the end of last year. Our leaders agreed on concrete steps to cooperate on issues that matter to our people and matter to the world and reduce the risk of misunderstanding and miscalculation. In the months since then, we focused intensively on advancing those commitments. I returned to China this week to take stock of where we've made progress and where more needs to be done so that we can deliver tangible results for the American people. Since the Woodside meeting between the presidents, we've also resumed direct military to military communications at multiple levels, something that I made a top priority for my meetings in Beijing. Uh, U.S. and PRC defense officials met for two days at the Pentagon in January. Earlier this month, our two countries, air and naval forces, held talks aimed at ensuring safer interaction. Uh, while there are more than 290,000 Chinese students in the United States, there are fewer than 900 Americans studying here in China. And that's a significant drop from a decade ago when we had about 15,000 Americans studying here. Uh, President Xi, Xi said that he wants to significantly increase the number of Americans studying here in the coming years, and that's something that we support. We have an interest in this. In my discussions today, I reiterated our serious concern about the PRC providing components that are powering Russia's brutal war of aggression against Ukraine. China is the top supplier of machine tools, microelectronics, nitrocellulose, which is critical to making munitions and rocket propellants, and other dual-use items that Moscow is using to ramp up its defense industrial base. A defense industrial base that is churning out rockets, drones, tanks, and other weapons that President Putin is using to power grid and other civilian infrastructure to kill innocent children, women, and men. Russia would struggle to sustain its assault on Ukraine without China's support. In my meetings with NATO allies earlier this month and with our G7 partners just last week, I heard that same message. Fueling Russia's defense industrial base not only threatens Ukrainian security, it threatens European security. <laughs> 